Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Cozy Does It. My name's Beth, and I'm really glad that you stopped by my channel today. I hope that you all had a really happy holiday and a great New Year's. So I took last week off, didn't post a video, but we're back now, and I'm excited to talk to you today. What I wanted to talk about today is a book that I just finished reading, and the reason I want to talk about it is because I think it would be a really helpful book for anyone just kind of getting started out in the decluttering process, not really knowing where to start, how to approach your own clutter if you want to organize your home, organize your life a little bit better. So the book that I want to talk about is called Stop Buying Bins. It was written in 2021 by author Bonnie Borromeo Tomlinson. And if you are watching by any chance, Bonnie, if I'm saying your name wrong, I'm so sorry. But anyway, your book is amazing. So let's talk about it. Bonnie is a former professional decorator and organizer. And now she writes full time, but books like this can really be helpful if you are approaching your clutter on your own and you either don't want to reach out to a professional organizer or don't have the resources to. And this book would really be a helpful tool if you want to approach this kind of project just on your own or with the help of your friends and family. I really liked the style that this book was written in. It was very much a storytelling kind of piece, almost like little essays put together of different client experiences that Bonnie had when she was working as a professional organizer. And it really opened my eyes to how much being a professional organizer is not just coming into someone's house, clearing out their clutter and trash and everything and making it look beautiful and presentable. It's very much necessary to involve the people whose house it is. They need to be part of the process for multiple reasons. One being to help sort out what is keep, what is donate, what is sell, what's throw away. And they need to be there to have that personal experience and connection to tell Bonnie or their organizer, whoever it might be, how they function in their house currently so that she can make it a better situation for them that supports their lifestyle or their vision a little bit better. So what I really loved about Bonnie's process and what I think would make it very approachable is that it starts as many minimalist processes do where you visualize the life that you want. So you're gonna take a little bit of time, you're going to think of what your why is, what your goal is in this process. Why do you want to declutter your home? What are you expecting to get out of doing that work, putting in that effort and putting in that time? Because it is a very emotional experience and you really need to be ready to approach it in order to successfully complete it. And one really big driving factor in that is your why. So you wanna figure out why you want to approach decluttering and what kind of change you want to see in your life. So Bonnie tells her stories in a very candid and blunt way. And it's almost as if a friend is giving you like very much needed tough love that you can't really see on your own without that outside input. So if you are approaching decluttering on your own and decide to use this book as a tool, you can kind of go back to those stories. And if you are in a similar situation where, say, you've had a loved one pass away and you inherit all of their belongings or need to sort through all of their belongings and you don't really know where to start, you have your own house full of stuff, you have your own family and full schedule, you can go back to stories like this and pull from the questions that she asked them, the kind of hard hitting questions that really get to the bottom of why you wanna keep something. And in the end, you might even learn that maybe that item is best served 
by going on to have a new life, being donated, being sold, or even being recycled. This book really will encourage you to hold up a mirror to your own situation, to take a look at your own clutter, your own shopping habits, your own behaviors that may be adding to your clutter. Say you subscribe to the whole idea of retail therapy, which I loved this one section in Barney's book where she had a client tell her, like, retail therapy is cheaper than the real thing, isn't it? Like, real therapy. And honestly, when you go out and you buy things that you don't need or buy things just because they are marked down, those things really add up if you're doing that a lot. And maybe real therapy would actually be cheaper. So, something to think about. In a couple of her stories, Bonnie mentions implementing lifestyle systems by asking questions about what you want your home to be like and what you want your life to be like. So going back to that why, toward the end of her book, she had a really interesting quote about how for her own goals and how she wants to like eventually get a home in Nantucket for a vacation home and how she saves up to do this by not buying items because when you go out of your house without a plan to shop for fun or shop for a hobby or even just to go out and get a cup of coffee, say your Starbucks is next to a store that you really like. Like if you're going out to get a cup of coffee, are you going to then just go to that store because it's convenient and then if you do go to that store, are you just gonna buy something just because it's on sale? Are you gonna bring that item home and then not get rid of it because you got it for such a good deal and you know, it wasn't that much skin off your nose? But then if you do that frequently, like I said, that really adds up and then you could potentially be spending a lot more money than you think you are. One way that Bonnie recommends that you see the amount of items that you buy that you don't need are to put them in a bin on their own, like anything with the tag still on that you have currently, put it in a bin on its own and you'll see the accumulation. And it's pretty remarkable sometimes. Before I found minimalism and decluttering, I would definitely be looking through my closet and see things with tags on them, things that I didn't wear, things that were dry clean only that I would never take to the dry cleaner and things that I were like was like afraid to ruin if I used them. Why were they in my house if I'm afraid to use them? Why is it in my house? Why does it need to be there? Those things like went off, got donated, got sold, got a new life and I felt so much lighter afterwards. So I, f I really felt that when reading this book, like you'll definitely get the itch to go through your stuff and anything you can return, just stockpile it, go return it, get it out of your house while you can still get your money back. And that can be a reward in and of itself. Saving can almost be as rewarding as that impulse of shopping can be. So again, toward the end of Bonnie's book, I felt that there were a lot of very important summarizations of what this process can be, how Bonnie got started, and what your home should be for you in order to be living your best experience there. So the quote that I really enjoyed was, Bonnie's mission was to help those overwhelmed by their possessions find a balance and an order that they could live their best lives in. She goes on to say that your home should relax and rejuvenate you and that the process of decluttering can really be transformative, not just for your home and how it appears, but also for your life, your mental health, your emotional state. So there's a lot of benefit to getting the distraction out of your house if you don't want it there. She also gives a really helpful story for people who have like a home store or a donation center in their home and how you can organize your space to best support your business or your 
mission and then also not live in that state constantly. So very important. I really just enjoyed reading this author's voice. I felt kind of a kindred spirit to her in that I feel like since I've found minimalism and decluttering, I think in a lot of the same ways that she would approach her clients' projects. And I don't need this kind of service in my life, but I still get a lot out of reading these sorts of stories and other people's journeys and experiences. And it really does give me a lot of joy to read about other people who have found this experience as well. I just really enjoyed reading how transformative it was for her clients' lives and happiness. And there was such a variety of stories that it really covered such a broad spectrum of experiences, ages, uh, size of your family, things like that. And I think that if you have it as a mission this year to go into 2024 with the mindset that you are going to declutter your home, declutter your storage spaces, and just free yourself a little bit from all the stuff, because we all have so much stuff. It's really about making a system that you can maintain and continue to implement. So you need to make it user-friendly. You can't just have an organizer come in, put all your stuff in bins, put labels on the bins, and then you're not gonna actually maintain that system. So the maintenance part is a huge component of it. It is so much easier than it sounds if you are intimidated right now by the amount of stuff in your house, I assure you, you can get it to a manageable point. It does take a lot of physical and emotional effort. So as I said at the beginning of this video, as Bonnie says at the beginning of her process, you really need to be ready and you really need that why. I bought this book on Amazon for the Kindle format. It was much cheaper than buying the book in a physical format. So I just have it here on my Kindle. This is what the cover looks like on Kindle. It looks similar in the physical form of the book if you prefer to read that sort of format better. I do like to consolidate my books in electronic format for the most part just because it saves space in my house. It is something I get a lot of enjoyment out of to read and reread books. I do switch over to physical books every once in a while if I'm experiencing like eye strain or something like that. But I do have this book on my Kindle and if you are looking to start this process, I think this is a great jumping off point. I will probably post other videos with other suggestions for books that kind of inspired me. This is one I found very recently. This author does have another book that just came out in 2023 called Stop Pushing for Perfection, which I have not read yet, but I am going to look into it just because I really enjoyed her, her writing voice and writing style, and I think that she had some really wise things to say. So I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, I hope that you will subscribe down below. And I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by. It has been so great having you and it's great to be back making some videos for you in 2024. Wow. And I just want to say I hope that you have a wonderful week and I hope that you have a really cozy day. So until next time, I'll see you.